So, all right. At first, I have this book out there I'm promoting. The best thing to do is to eat your breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. And then I flip over to this idea where, no, 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 that's false information. Don't eat your breakfast, fast. And uh, now I'm flipping and recommending eating breakfast. So what's going on? So just hear me out. It will make sense. Because sometimes when you hear new information that changes the way you do things uh, for the better, um, you know, you have to be willing to at least learn about it and study about it, and then maybe even try it to see if it does work better. My goal is definitely not to be right about things. It's just to be more successful with things. And uh, unfortunately, especially in science, um, there are certain scientists that just, they have their pet theories and boy, they are not very flexible in changing their viewpoints on their theories. So I think it's a good thing. So I want to share with you some information that um, may possibly change your mind about this as well. And I'm not saying you should even do it, but just hear me out. You have various variables. You have your diet, okay? And then you have fasting, your pattern of fasting, okay? Uh, for me, it's a 20 hours fasting, a four hour eating window. But you also have the timing of when those patterns are. So when is your first meal? Is it going to be at 12 noon, three o'clock? It's going to be at night? Well, at first I thought it really didn't matter too much, okay? And I thought maybe if you can, you know, go to bed at night, you wake up, you're already fasting, why would you want to eat, right? You just ride the wave and you go as long as you can. And that seemed to work pretty good. But there's something that happened to me recently that caused me to just look at this timing a little bit closer. Um, let's say about two weeks ago, I was, I ate really late and I ate a lot of protein and I did not sleep hardly at all. And it got me thinking, first of all, protein tends to stimulate and wake the body up. And of course, if you eat a lot of that late at night, that's not good too. So I started to do some research into this area and found this right here, early time restrictive eating. And there's <laughs> quite a bit of hardcore research on this basically eating earlier in the day because that aligns with your circadian rhythms a bit more, which I found interesting, especially since it affected my sleep. So in other words, the whole concept is basically do your pattern, but just switch it earlier and uh, don't eat past like three o'clock. But I want to share with you some of the um, research on this. It's pretty interesting. There was better HOMA IR um, results. What's HOMA IR? That's a test to measure insulin resistance. So basically, there was improved insulin sensitivity. Okay, so that's that's cool. Number two, there was better blood sugars. Now, these studies that I'm listing down below really are not changing the diet. They're not changing the pattern of eating. They're just changing the timing of when you eat. That's it and we have better blood sugars. Number three, there's better or improved beta cell response. That is the main cell in the pancreas that produces insulin. And so it just responded better, which is interesting. Uh, number four, you had less appetite in the evening. Now, a lot of people graze at night. So if you can just really handle that appetite at night, so there's absolutely no cravings whatsoever, that could be beneficial. And number five, there was better insulin levels after you're eating. So when you eat, the insulin should spike a certain level. Well, there was less spiking. So obviously, it was better insulin control over the food that you ate. Number six, there was more autophagy. And number seven, I already mentioned this, it aligns with your body rhythms a bit more. Apparently, in the evening, the, the genes that deal with food are more downgraded. They're supposed to be downgraded, not upgraded. So if you eat too late, you kind of upgrade them and start activating them. And because it's part of your digestive system, that's going to kind of wake you up and affect your sleep. So I found that fascinating. So my pattern is 20 hours of fasting in four-hour eating window. So I will eat at 9 a.m., okay? first meal, second meal at one, and then I'm done. I will not eat anything past this. Now, another thing that this tends to solve is this little cortisol spike at eight o'clock in the morning where a lot of people get this wave of hunger. And, uh, you know, I always just tell people to push through it. 
But if you did eat here and then had your next meal here, and maybe even go to three o'clock, and if your pattern is a little bit different, it might give you more results with what you're trying to achieve. Now, the drawback is that if there's a social event with other family members at dinner, you know, that's going to create a problem. So it does throw off your schedule. And I'm not even saying that you should do this pattern. All I'm saying is that uh, it's something to look at if uh, maybe you want to squeeze out more results. Um, I'm going to continue to do this for a couple more weeks. And uh, so far, so good. But I'm not 100% sold on this quite yet. I want to do this for a little bit longer to see what happens. But I like the concept. I like the results. So far, I am noticing uh, improvement in my sleep. So I just wanted to introduce you to this concept and something you may want to consider or not, depending on where you're at and your results that you're getting. And since we're on the topic of blood sugars, I recently released a video on a really cool spice that you can consume that can even take you to the next level with your blood sugar. So I'm going to put that up right here. Check it out.